share. Um, just thought I'd show you what I've been crafting this week and um, maybe you'll be inspired and want to try these. So I've been looking for ideas for Christmas gifts that would be beautiful, somebody might really enjoy receiving, but maybe wouldn't cost too much to mail. Um, so uh, a suggestion came up on my YouTube uh, feed that was from Little Shabby Chic's channel, Trisha, and it was vintage uh, Christmas brooches. And, you know, her crafting is absolutely gorgeous. And um, so I watched the video and was very inspired. And um, they were something that I could use a lot of my snippets up for, too, which was also very appealing to me. So um, I thought I would show you what I created. Um, let's see, I'll start with the first one because I don't know about you, but when you start making a project, usually by the time you make two or three, you don't like the first one very much anymore. Well, this is the first one and I used some linen uh, fabric and sort of cut it in a rectangle. Then I trimmed it with some lace just to cover up the raw edge. And um, I put this little pretty piece of, um, satiny uh, applique back here because I'm going to put the brooch pen underneath that. Um, and usually most of my pieces that are shaped like this I like to crown the top so it's sort of like a crown. So this is the back. I also wanted it to be sort of pretty because it's only going to be pinned down up here so you may still end up seeing the back. This is a front and the front's just a lot of cut out little flowers with flat back pearls and sequins and applique and there's this little dangle trim it's not really dangle kind of like leaves or feathery and then I love the combination of the the beige and the ecru and the creams and the whites I like mixing those colors um, for contrast and so I have the applique that has sequins and I thought because they're brooches, they should have one prominent piece of bling. So the, the piece on this one is this. And then you can see where I sort of crowned it at the top. And um, so this was the first one. Not my favorite, but a start. And can I just give a little disclaimer about my... I'm calling this my designer ink finger <laughs> because I was working on some Christmas crafts and I was distressing the edges and um, using the Tim Holtz ink and uh, the applicator was just not getting it for me so I used my finger and I'm telling you this is like I don't know 10 hand washings later and it's still not coming off so that's why I have a black blue finger sorry about that um, Okay, so then the next one, very similar in shape, I used a doily, a crocheted lace doily, and I cut it for the top and the bottom. The center piece is layered over, is it felt on this one? Yeah, I think I used felt. And this is some awesome lace. I love this lace. I'm really missing my lace and trim store back in Arizona. That is one of the best things about Arizona was that store. <laughs> But anyway, um, it's mounted on that. And then I just have, again, dangle lace at the bottom. Some really pretty glazed... Uh, actually, this is part of the dangle lace, isn't it? Yeah. And then um, just little cutout flowers layered on top of uh, applique and doily. And these are full pearls that I stuck down. And then this middle piece I cut into pieces so that I could put leaves on the sides. And then the prominent piece of bling is just pearls and rhinestones. And then there's a seam binding ribbon bow. And um, that was the last thing I added. I felt like it just needed a bow. And then at the top there's the flowers with the pearls. And again, I crowned it at the top with a piece of lace and some leaves sticking out. I did those leaves to kind of take away the, the 
rectangle shape. I didn't want it to holler, I am a rectangle. I wanted it to kind of have more dimension. So that's the second one. And the third one, by the time I did the third rectangle, I really, really liked it. And it has this nice linen fabric that I used on my Angel Christmas sack. I did a video on those, which I loved, but I had some scraps left over. And it's a really nice quality fabric, so I was actually happy I could use the scraps as well. And I just folded it in half and made this little cutout here to slide the kilt pin in. Just a little baby kilt pin. And um, it looks like I need to stick that down better, but this is some vintage. I love this doily. It's like tea dyed and it's that real webby, pretty um, doily on the back. And this is the front. And the front again has just got the dangle lace and the combination of the ecru and the creams and the tea dyed. And um, this is a popular lace that you see on those skirts that you find, I find them in the thrift store with layers and layers of lace and just cut up and then there's some flat back pearls on there there's some bridal applique there is more of that vintage doily and I just layered some more flat back pearls and the bridal applique and the last thing I added for the bling on this one was this cameo I just thought really set it off. I love the applique because it's already got the kind of uh, amber colored sequins or tea dyed color and pearls and they sparkle and I felt like a brooch needs to, if you're calling it shabby chic, it should have a little sparkle. So this was the third one I made. By the time I made it to the third one I was hooked and I was digging through all my bags of snippets and just having a lot of fun. So then on to the fourth one I changed shapes and I used, let me show you the back, I used just a cotton crocheted doily as the base and then I had those corded lace doilies, I'm sure you've seen them, they're really pretty and they have uh, lots of flowers so you can kind of cut those. This is a piece of lace I see a lot on people's uh, projects. I cut this from a blouse and then tea dyed it, but I like how it kind of makes a medallion shape at the bottom of the doily. This is the front. This is a common piece of lace I see too, but I have just a few pieces of this left and so I cut one for the top and one for the bottom and so I just layered it over this and then there's a rayon seam binding tea dyed bow and I love this trim. This is like pearl and diamante and it comes in um, strips and so I just put some on each side and then a little right down the middle there and then there's a satin ribbon or satin rosette with the big piece of pearl and rhinestone bling and then again it's layered over another doily that I tea dyed and then another piece of bling in the middle so and this is more from that skirt with the flat back pearls so I like this one because it's change of shape and of course the suggestion is usually that you could pin this on your lapel or jean jacket or a bag I like all those ideas um, oh, and then this one, different colors, and love, love, love how it turned out. This was a round white cotton doily. I folded it into threes um, and kind of gave it that asymmetrical shape like this. And then it's layered over some pink linen. Um, I also made some pink shabby chic Christmas stockings where I did the same technique and I layered the lace over the pink linen just so it would kind of have a little undertone of pink. So this is the back, and I have a little crown of lace, and that's a space for the pen to go through. And then on the front, I have little baby clay roses, um, um, some avocado dyed pink lace there, 
And then there's just this little offshoot of lace where I had a resin white rose. And then I have these little clay pink flowers that I bought from Hobby Lobby. And I bought one of these years and years ago and it just sat in my stash because I never really knew what I was going to use it for. And then it, when I started using it, it was so putsy. I didn't like it. <laughs> but now that I found uses for these little clay flowers, I bought a new one and they actually had it on clearance. I don't even know if they make these anymore, but I was really happy to get my hands on that. And then there's this beautiful pink rose gold piece of bling. And then these are the satin ribbon roses that I found at a different haul and I have these in white in that pretty mauvey pink. And this is a white uh, flower applique and they're so cushiony. I've been gifted these from several people and they feel like marshmallow. They're so soft. I know Ruby stashed some in one of her packages to me which was just so sweet. Um, so anyway, this is the pink and white one. I love the size of this too. It's not too big. Um, and then the last one which is my favorite. <laughs> it's sort of a play on circles and squares, at least in my mind it is. And um, it has that really pretty um, vintage lace doily trim here that's real webby. And I tea dyed that doily, so I love that color. This is a long strip of lace that I folded over. And so it goes from front to back, but I folded it so that the kilt pin would just slide in there works really well. This is more of that lace from the skirt that has layers and layers of lace. And then this is the front. And the reason I say it's a play on circle and square is because this center bling piece is a square. And so I put four satin ribbon roses down in the middle. Um, actually, these are silk ribbon roses. And then the circle bling, there's a big one here and a smaller one underneath. And then I just kind of framed it with the little cutouts of um, applique. And this pretty uh, applique was on one of those little girl dresses that was a silk dress. And it had really pretty um, lace trim that I tea dyed. And then there's some eyelash trim sticking out here for just more texture. And again, I crowned it with some more of the trim and I just love how this one turned out I like the size of it and by the time I got to this one which was the sixth one I was totally hooked on making these so I just wanted to show you what I created and I'm calling them just my Victorian I'm well, not Victorian shabby chic vintage brooches so I'll show them all to you you know what let me I'll put them on here. There's one. And you now the colors are rather muted and soft, but I think it's okay because they're blingy. I didn't want them to be too loud. And I really, really love how they turned out. I also want to share one more thing with you really quick, which is, um, I was watching a live that Kim at Angel Dreamcrafts does a while back and she was talking about rusting her metal pieces and I didn't catch exactly how she did it but I really wanted to do it so I um, heard a recipe where it's like I'm gonna just tell you roughly it's like a half a cup of white vinegar a quarter cup of peroxide and salt and I put it in a glass container they stressed definitely put it in glass you let it sit 24 hours and it will rust. Now, this one definitely rusted, and I love how it turned out. But these were made by Sewology, and they didn't rust, but they did something which I think is even better. It's like a rose gold color. Can you see that? I love how that turned out. I mean, wouldn't that be pretty on a pink and white? So anyway, um, I'm not being very uh, precise with measurements. Um, or recipe so you have to kind of just play with it or go on the Google I'm not Google search but YouTube search and ask how to rust your metal pieces for like um, 
mixed media and uh, steampunk, but or vintage. Anyway, I was really happy with the results. I only did a couple because I wasn't sure how it was going to turn out. So you can either keep it that nice shiny chrome color or you can get those results. I can't guarantee you'll get the rose gold, but I hope you do if that's what you want. I just wanted to show you how those turned out. I'm sorry, I got a little interrupted there because I don't know how to make my phone not ring while I'm recording. I just know how to silence it, so I have to figure that out. But anyway, I was just showing you the finished brooches that I made. And I was going to end it here anyway, so thank you for watching. Thank you for your kind comments. Thank you for always um, being so supportive. I hope maybe you've been inspired to try these with your snippets. I think someone might really enjoy receiving these. At least I hope so. I know I would anyway. So um, just thought I'd share that with you. It's been great to chat and craft. And I'll be back again soon. Hopefully with another video. I hope you'll join me then. Everybody have a wonderful day. Bye.